Today we're going to be going through Man Crate's wooden RC car set. As here. Go ahead and cut to B-roll. Let's start by opening her up. In the box, you're going to get a booklet if you're quaint enough for the written word. Your uh, controller. All of the parts that you'll need, including tires. Everything is bagged and labeled. And then, of course, all of the wooden parts. Laser cut out of three millimeter plywood. So I'll go to the side. There's gonna be a few things that you're also gonna need besides all the things in the kit. Uh, one of those will be some wood glue. You can also just use regular Elmer's glue. Uh, Loctite is a nice to have, but not really required and then a utility knife or X-Acto blade for trimming off uh, any hard edges. And then lastly, just a piece of sandpaper. Um, I'm using 400 grit, but you could use 220. And this is just if any of the pieces fit a little bit tight, you can sand off a little bit to help them slide in a little more easily. And that's it. So to get started with the kit, the first thing that we're gonna be putting together is the suspension. And that's gonna come in all of these marked pieces. Go ahead and take the tape off of the wooden sheets and start punching out all of the little pieces if any of them don't come out easily. All of the pieces are going to be labeled in addition to how they're labeled on the sheet so that you can recognize them easily. And then you're just gonna go through and start assembling. What I like to do is take a little bit of the wood glue uh, put it into a bowl so I can use a brush rather than just glob it on straight from the bottle. It helps you be a little bit neater. So when you're putting together all these different pieces, they're all going to be grouped how they'll go. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the, uh, the front upper control arm. Pull out all those pieces. On the front arms, you're gonna have something a little bit different than the rear arms where there's gonna be two pieces that you're doubling up on all of these to give it a little more strength. But you're gonna have one of them that's marked inside and one of them that's marked outside. And I'll show you how those go together. The reason for the difference is that the, the end of these pieces are cut a little bit more fine, a little bit thinner. And so that way you don't rub against the interior of the wheel when it's going. And I'll, I'll show you that in detail later, but just so you keep an eye on that. So when you're gluing these together, just take a little bit of glue, put it on between the pieces, and then go ahead and glue up these two. So I have one outside piece and one inside piece, and I'll repeat the process again with the other side. So there's two arms, and then take one of these cross braces, put the glue. And so this is where the inside outside comes into place. So the inside is what's gonna be facing this brace. Just put a little glue between there and in those slots. Stick that piece in, push it through till it gets all lined up perfectly and repeat that with the other side as well. And 
And once that's together, you can just wipe off any excess glue, and then just set that aside to let it dry, and move on to the next one. And so for each of these control arms, you're gonna have two matching pieces. Again, the one marked inside is the one that faces in towards this brace. You can see that the outside ones are just a little bit thinner in how they're cut. So there's our two arms. Now let's keep moving down and just do the rest of the pieces in this set. So I'm going to do the other, the front top control arms. Should have four pieces, and again, these ones are marked with outside and inside. Wipe off any excess glue. You just set that aside and again, outside, outside. One thing that you'll notice is that all of them have a few holes on both ends. If you have a little glue in these smaller of the holes, it's not a big deal. You're pushing a screw through there later on, so it'll stay clean. Uh, if you have some glue kind of sticking, coming out from too much excess, uh, go ahead and take one of the pieces that you're gonna be using later on. They are uh, called binding posts, and that's what's gonna be going through there an old bag mark binding post. And just push those through the hole just to clean it out and make sure that there's no glue that's gonna be drying there to keep that from being able to happen later on. All right, 
now we're moving on to the rear control arms. These ones are not marked with outside and inside, so they can be put together however. They do have one difference though, and that's that these are marked, or two of these are cut with two holes, and these are cut with one hole. Uh, that's because the brace is not symmetrical, and so you'll use the, the two hole side for, we'll go through here, and the one hole side will go through there, like this. So just make sure you're matching those up correctly when you're gluing them. you have all four of those glued up and just put in the braces same as you did before. And the last one, you have some spares here for if any of these control arms break later on. So you can go ahead and assemble these two and just hold on to them in the assembled form while you're at it. But those are there in case something breaks while you're driving the car later on. Uh, usually the control arms are one of the first things that might go if you were to crash onto something head on. So these ones are very similar to the last ones you did. These are the bottom rear control arms. Just pair them off. There we go. And again, just glue them up. So now we have the two sets, and again, they don't quite match. It's because we have this asymmetrical brace, one with two tabs on one side and one tab on the other side. So just put it together accordingly. And this one also has a separate brace in the front. Put it together like that. side. All right, and the 
let's just do the last one. Alright, that's all of our control arms, so we'll lay them out so you can see them. So these are the bottom, rear, top rear, front, top, um, front bottom, and uh, top front. So now you can just set these aside to dry as you get ready to work on the rest of the front suspension. All right, now that the glue is dried, we're ready to start assembling our control arms. So let's go ahead and put everything together and group them by the part where they go. So we have on this side, these are the rear control arms. We have the bottom, which have that extra brace on there, and the top. Um, which don't, but they have this little nub here to let you know that that's going on top. Those are paired together. And those go with these fixed steering cups that don't have a swivel on them. I'll put those together. And then for the front, we have these are the rear control arms, the rear bottom control arms, and then the rear top control arms, which look just like the, um, the, the rear top uh, control arms, except these ones are just a little shorter. And then the steering cups for the front have the swivel, which of course allows you to steer. So we'll group those together. And then we'll need these three millimeter by 12 millimeter screws. And a bunch of these uh, wooden washers. So let's go ahead and start with the rear control arms. And these are going to assemble kind of like this. We have the bottom screwing in here and the top screwing in here. And those are going to be held in with these screws. So starting at the bottom, this is going to be on the short side and we're going to screw into the, there's two sets of holes, we're going to screw into the bottom set of holes here. So hold that over there, push the screw through. that screw started. Before you tighten it, get the other side started as well. Just so you don't have to watch me do this, I have a drill. Now you want to be careful not to over tighten this. Just make sure that at the end, once the screws are in all the way, this can still rotate freely. If it doesn't, then your suspension will be really stiff. Uh, now we take the top one, and this one's going to go on to the, uh, the inmost of the two holes. So this is the incorrect hole, and that's the correct hole. Won't make too much of a difference. It won't be the end of the world if you get that wrong.
both those rotate freely. It's fairly centered in there, and that's the whole assembly. And again, this is the top, this is the bottom. And let's go ahead and just set that aside for now and do the exact same thing with the other side. Now we're going to start with the front control arms. Similarly, this piece will be the bottom, this piece will be the top. And so on the bottom, we'll look kind of like this, and top like this. I'll give you a better look at that once I screw these in. Okay, you can see how that looks with the turning cup, and this is the bottom, this is the top. Go ahead and set that aside, and then do the last one, same as before.
Man, I really hope there's music cutting over this video or it'll be really boring. Now that we're done with these control arms, we're ready to start assembling the whole suspension. So the next thing we're gonna have to do is find the sheet that has all of our suspension parts. Which looks like this. Let's go ahead and peel the tape and pull out the parts that we need. So what we're looking for is the A2, the A3, the A4, and the A5 pieces. Go ahead and pull those out, and you'll save all the other stuff for later. So when you're pairing them up, pair up the two A5 pieces can go right on top of each other. The A4 and the A3 will go together. And you can actually go and glue up these A5 and A, the two A5 pieces and the A3 and A4 pieces together. Uh, same as you did the suspension, just add just a little bit of glue. This will just give it a little extra strength. It's not totally necessary that you do this, but it will make it your car just a little bit stronger in the end. Now we're ready to start assembling. The next thing that we're gonna need is the gearboxes. All right, this is your gearboxes. And this is really important that you get this part right because these are not the same. As you can see, one has uh, a longer drive shaft with two holes through it. And the other one has these same cups like you have on the sides of the gearbox. This one is the front one. And so set that aside with the front steering cups. And this one is the rear. So make sure you set that over with the rear components. The A3 and A5 piece, this goes with the rear, or sorry, A3, A4. And the A5 piece goes with the front. And then lastly, the A2, each, the front and the rear, gets one of those. All right, now that we have paired up our front and rear suspension parts, uh, we're ready for the wheels. And these will actually be important at this part because they're gonna hold on our, uh, our dog bones and our axles. So let's go ahead and start with the simpler of the two sets, which is the rear. So go ahead and grab two of the tires. And you'll notice when you look in the tire, there's a little hex, and in that is a little cross that's kind of uh, hollowed out. That's to accept the pins uh, that connect the axle to the wheel. So if go ahead and grab the rear set. Uh, the rear set comes in a little baggie with a bunch of little parts. Let me grab those for you so you can see them. Okay. There's going to be two of these um, shorter, slightly thicker dog bones. These are their axles. And there's going to be two of these detached little cups. Um, 
the longer ones with the, um, the screws on the end and uh, pins. So you can see these ones, the, uh, the axle kind of sits in there and comes in and out. That's the rear. Uh, so let's go ahead and attach those to one of the wheels so you can see how that will work. And we're going to need the cups will kind of come into play here too. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take uh, this piece and thread it through into the bearing in the cup. And you can see this little hole is going to peek through there um, just on the other side. And that's where we're going to slot through these little tiny metal pins. So keep it pointed up vertically and put that pin through so that gravity can keep that thing in place. Um, this one's pretty snug. Ah, there we go. And get that centered in place. Now what's going to happen is you're going to just invert the wheel on top of that and seat that pin into one of these little crosses in there. And that will let the threads go all the way through. And then you can take one of these nuts. These are um, nylon locking nuts that will not come loose as you drive. And just screw that in place. That will lock everything in there. You can use the the wrench that came with the set to do this. Go ahead and tighten that as tight as you can. And now you can see when you spin the wheel this thing also turns. That lets you know that you've seated it right and you're ready to go. Uh, go ahead and repeat that with the other rear tire. So again, push that all the way up there through. See this hole through there. Insert a pin. Keep it balanced so it's centered and then invert the tire onto it. And then just rotate the tire until you feel it slip into place. And we're going to put on that nut to hold the tire on. Screw that down as tight as you can. All right, so there's our two rear wheels. Set those aside, and let's do the front wheels while we're at it. Now the front wheels are a little bit different in that these axles will become fixed. And you see the dog bones for the front wheels, only one of the sides has the cross piece, the other side does not right now. We're gonna put that in as we assemble it. These are very small parts, so try not to lose these. So first insert this thicker pin that has the hole going through crossways into this end of the dog bone, the axle. And then put it into this ball here. And then lastly, insert the pin all the way through. All right, and that pin will hold everything in place. When that pin is seated inside the steering cup, 
that will keep that pin from coming out. But for right now, until you do that, that pin could still fall out again. So be a little bit careful, hold that in place and then slide that through on that, on the steering cup, just like before. There we go. And so now you can see we can follow the same process that we had before, but this time the axle is going to be attached and is not going to be floating like it is on the other one. So again, take a pin, put it through, invert the tire onto it, and then rotate till you feel that locking place, and then screw on that nut. You might not be able to get that nut all the way tight right now because there's nothing to hold the axle with. Uh, just wait until you assemble the entire suspension. They'll be really easy to have that held in place while you tighten those, ac those nuts up the rest of the way. But for right now, that's how that should look. So go ahead and repeat that with the last one. Putting that fat barrel pin through. Line then down. Sort of not knowing what these pieces are actually supposed to be called. There we go. Now that pin's in place. Let's go ahead and put the through the steering cup. Put through our last pin. Put on the tire. And screw on the nut. All right, so there's our four tires with the control arms attached and we're ready to assemble the suspension. All right, now we're gonna really start putting together the suspension. So go ahead and grab um, all of the binding posts that come in a bag of 16 of these long binding posts. Uh, you're going to have your sets of everything you need for your suspension. You have your control arms that are attached to your tires at this point. Uh, you have the A4 and A3 pieces and the A2 pieces for the rear ones. Uh, you have your axles and you have your gearbox. So let's go ahead and start with the A2 piece. And you're going to be putting the gearbox through that and it'll kind of you'll kind of push it right into that little square opening in the middle like that and make sure that this drive shaft is coming through the A2 piece also on the bottom you have this little slot down here that should kind of line up with the bottom of the gearbox now let's take one of these binding posts this will um, and put it through the bottom. Doesn't matter which side, you'll, these will mirror each other. And then let's grab our one of our tires. So we're going to take the bottom control arm, because this is the bottom, the wide part, the bottom of the A2 piece. And we're going to go ahead and just slide that right over into place. And now we're going to seat 
our first axle. So that's going to go and sit right here in the steering cup. And the other one's going to sit here in the gearbox. And that kind of connects those two, and that's what's going to be rotating your wheel while you drive. Give you a better look at that. So now, now it's the tricky part. While that's in place, go ahead and go through and seat another one, the top one, and push that all the way through. All right. And we just want to have something hold that for the time being. So let's take a little bit of tape, or actually, you know what you can do is just put these screws on, just put them on finger tight for now, and that will just hold that in place while we wait until we're ready to do the next end piece. So now just mirror that same method with the other side. First do the bottom, put on the bottom control arm over that. Let's do our axle. And then that top binding post. All right, great. Now you can see exactly how that's gonna look and how that's gonna work. And now we wanna put this other plate in place right here. So let's remove the uh, tops of the binding posts that we just put on there. And using your hand, hope make sure none of those binding posts bottoms fall out while you're doing this. We want the A4 to be facing up when we do this and we're just going to slide this and put this right over and try to line it up with all these pins. Before you do that, you have a couple of these wooden washers. Those will just go on the tops as spacers like that. And then you can put on your A4 slash A3 piece that we put together earlier. So push that through, keep holding it on the bottom so the post can't find uh, fall out, and we'll screw in all of these binding post ends. So just get these in there quick so and not tight while you, uh, so you don't have to keep holding it. Alright, there you can see exactly how that's going to work. Uh, now, before I tighten these all the way, I think it's, uh, I like to put on Loctite. I think it really helps these screws, when you have a lot of vibration on a place like this, to keep from falling out and getting lost. So if you're going to put on a little bit of Loctite, they come in little sample tubes as well as these big tubes. Just put a little bit there on the threads. And then just screw it right in place like you normally would. And go ahead and screw it down as tight as you can, just using your finger to hold the other end. Obviously, you're not going to be able to 
get it too, too tight, but that Loctite on there, it'll stay in place. So the last thing to do here will be to put on our shock absorbers and that's what will give us that actual suspension. Uh, but go ahead and set this aside for now. We'll do the front and then we'll go back later and do the shock absorbers. So this process is going to look almost identical. Uh, again, remember the front gear box uh, it doesn't have that drive shaft sticking out. It looks the same on this side as it does on the, the sides that connect to your axles. Um, put that through our 8-2 piece, kind of push that into place. And just starting with one of the sides on the bottom, push through your binding post. Put on the bottom control of the control arm. Got a little glue in there. There we go. And then, just like before, Line this up to connect. Once that is slotted, put the top control arm in place and then slide through the top binding post. The one difference on this one is where the, uh, the position of these washers. These washers should actually go on towards the front of the car so that will be the washer will go on before the control arm. Forgot to mention that. So as you're putting on this binding post go ahead and slip on that washer and then put it through Now that we've put together the rear suspension, we're going to put together the front suspension and it'll go together pretty much the exact same way. So first, take our wheels and the control arms. We're going to start with the A2 piece, just like in the other one, and we're going to set the gearbox into that. It should line up like this with the, um, the connector for the drive shaft going through the A2 piece. Next. We'll take and we'll just pick one of these sides and on the bottom we'll put through um, this binding post. And then we're going to have to pick the correct wheel here because we need these horns that can connect to the steering rod to be facing the A2 piece. This is really important. If you get this backwards, you're going to have to redo the whole thing. So it looks like this is the right one for me. 
uh, the bottom control arm, make sure that is mounted on the bottom here. And then when that is connected the right way, you'll see that this horn is on the same. Oh, you know, I got it backwards. <laughs> it's the other way around. You'll see that this horn is on the same side as the A2 piece. And so that will allow you to connect your steering rod, which will control your steering later on. So now that I have that on, I'm going to seat this drive shaft or this um, axle into the gearbox, put the other control arm in place, and insert the other binding post. There we go. And then I'll complete that side. Let's put on these screws just finger tight to hold that in place while we do the other side. Again, starting on the bottom with the binding post. Let's put on the bottom one here. And let's double check and make sure that our steering horn is on the same side as the other one and on the same side as the A2 piece. Now let's seat the axle and then we'll put in the last binding post. There we go. All right, now that we have all those in place, we're ready to put on these other A5 pieces to kind of complete this assembly. So let's use your hand to hold in all of these binding posts and then remove these screws. And then just like the other one, we're going to use two of these wooden washers. Those are going to sit on the top two control arms. Then we'll put on the A5 pieces to sandwich everything in place. There we go. The second one too. Just like with the last one, uh, I, I advise using Loctite to hold these in place to prevent them from coming apart from the vibration when you're driving. So Loctite is great if you have it. If you don't, you can substitute with super glue, or you can even use nail polish in a pinch. Again, what that's doing is just keeping these screws from vibrating loose while you drive. There we go. Now that is all ready to hook up our shock absorbers, and then the suspension's done. So doing the shock absorbers will be the same on both of the axles, so I'll just show you on this one, and then you can see the, the, the you'll just follow the exact same steps on the rear one. So on the same side is the A5, so opposite A2 is where the suspension's gonna go between these two points. You're gonna need two of these wooden washers per side, and so you're going to take a binding post, put it through 
the bottom control arm. Stack on two of these wooden washers and then grab your shock absorber and put it here. Close up the binding post on the bottom. And then you'll use one of the short binding posts on the top. And again, using Loctite here would be a good idea. There you go, there's a complete front suspension and a complete rear suspension with the shock absorbers. Next step will be to do the frame and just mount these onto the frame. This is the hard first half, the next, the next half will go much faster, be a lot easier. So go ahead and punch out all of the pieces for your frame. Uh, basically anything with the B, 1 through 6, and then the frame itself. So first step with the frame, we're going to be attaching the motor, and we're going to be attaching the steering servo. So starting with the motor, sign. there's going to be two of these motor mount plates that are going to sit right up here against the back of the frame. This is the back. Right over this slot in the back, this is a pass-through for the gear so it doesn't rub. And you see you can get all of these holes here to line up. So here's our motor, which I have unboxed. It's going to be sitting like this on top of our frame and we're going to use screws to connect from underneath the bottom into this mounting plate. Uh, the mounting plate has a couple little nubs on it that need to be trimmed off that will keep it from sitting correctly. So just take your X-Acto knife or any kind of knife and just cut off those nubs. We don't need those. And now we can go ahead and mount this plate. So take 2.6 by 12 millimeter screws. You have four of these, two for the top and two for the bottom of this mounting plate. So put two aside. Put the first two through here, get it through all the holes. come through and then we're gonna screw the uh, the motor on top of those and you can just line those up with the holes in the bottom of the motor mounting plate and then using our screwdriver 
just screw those into place. make sure I start both of them before I really get them tight. to do our servo. So get our servo mount, get your servo motor. This is what will be turning your car. And so to start out with, we want to make sure that the two holes are facing towards the front of the car for the motor mount or for the servo mount. And this is going to sit down into this slot right here like this and then slide into the slot kind of pinching the servo motor inside of there. But before you put it on there, let's pass the cable for the servo mount through the hole in the middle, and then feed your servo motor into the gap there. Now we can take it and then just slot it right in this channel. Go. And that's that part will hold the servo motor along with this B2 piece, which sits on right here. It's a nice snug fit. find yourself having issues because some of the fitment of these is too tight, this is a great chance to use your sandpaper. So just take a little sandpaper and just sand these pieces just a little bit. It shouldn't take too much to get them just thin enough so that they slide on a little more easily. Now that that's on, these should be pinching the servo motor between them. And you're going to use three screws and nuts to finish assembling that. So when you're putting on these nuts, you're, you can use the uh, wrench that came with the set. There it is. These are made to fit the back side of this wrench. So if we'll just sit them right into that slot to hold them. Hold that onto the back of the spot and just screw into it. Make it nice and easy. Screw that until it's good and snug, and that will lock that servo motor into place.
right, there we go. All right, now we can move on to our steering. So steering, we'll start with our steering columns, which are these large, uh, let's see what size these are, 60 millimeter bolts. These are gonna come up to the bottom of the frame. Like that. And then we have our steering assembly, which will sit on top of that. So here's the steering assembly. It should be oriented like this, with this horn coming off to the right side. That's going to be connecting to your uh, servo motor. Before we put this on here, let's go ahead and attach the small steering rod. It'll just be easier to attach before it's assembled. So here's our small steering rod. And you'll need a couple of the screws that come with it. So the screws pass through the steering rod and then connect to the bottom of the horn for the steering assembly. So mount that on there good and snug. Now let's go ahead and put on our steering assembly. So first, before we put it on, uh, take two of these B3 pieces. These are spacers. Put them onto the steering columns. Then put on your steering assembly. And then lastly, put on these uh, locking nuts that come with the steering column bolts. And just finger tighten them for now. This is just so that they don't fall out while you're doing other work. So now that that's in place, we can attach all of our steering rods, including the one that goes to the servo. So now we can connect directly to the servo. Take another one of these screws, pass it through this, the short steering rod, and then into the servo horn, which is this piece right here. And again, get that good and snug. And then we can attach both of our steering, uh, long steering rods. And these will attach to the bottom of these, uh, the steering assembly, these horns here, like this. So again, using the same screws that you were using for all of the steering assembly. Uh, there they are. Put it through the steering rod first and then screw up into the steering assembly. Ow, shoot. All right, third time is charm. All right. And then do the same thing with the other one. Got 
that one on the first try. Okay, there's the frame so far. Now that we have it to this point, we are ready to put on both of our suspensions and tires. So let's go ahead with the rear first. And again, the rear is the one with this drive shaft coming off of it. Let's go ahead and take that. And we're just gonna slide the frame into this slot right here. I need to wiggle it around. This one's a little bit loose, but a lot of times these can be real tight. And before you get it all the way to this motor mounting plate, we're gonna need to insert the, um, the, the main gear. So the main gear has two sides. One uh, has this hole that going through it for the pin. And so that pin is on this side right here. So the, the, this is gonna, the hole with the pin is gonna be facing the rear gearbox. So before you put that on, just make sure that your pins can fit through there. So what we're looking for is these half threaded screws. It's basically it looks like a pin with a small amount of threading up near the head. Just make sure that can push through onto there easy enough. If you do it one time ahead of time, it can make it a lot easier when you're gonna do it for real. I mean, I got it stuck. Okay. Now, set that in place in this slot right here. Line it up with this drive shaft. And then once that's in place, go ahead and push that through and push it all the way through the motor mounting plate. There's a bearing inside the motor mounting plate that you should also be passing through. So just make sure that's lined up. all the way in place. You can see this drive shaft spinning. And then once you put that pin in to this gear, that'll lock everything in place so when the gear spins, the back tire spin. So hold this gear in place and turn the wheels until you see all the holes line up. Get that pin, and carefully insert it. in there, screw it into place. And then you'll be ready to move on to attach the rest of the drive assembly. All right, now that we've gotten the greater gear on there, we can use one of these half threaded screws. And we're gonna use that to go through the gear and through the uh, the drive shaft coming off of the rear gearbox. So go ahead and take one of these screws and you'll feed it through that hole. And once you get it through that hole, you can go ahead and tighten it up in place using a screwdriver. To line up that hole, just take and hold the gear in place and just turn the wheels to turn this main axle until you get the holes all lining up and then just push that screw through. There we go, that's all snug. And then we'll do a similar process on the front end of this uh, drive shaft where there's another hole you can see. And that's what we have this little cup for. That's gonna sit on this hole, or sit on that shaft. And again, you use the other half threaded screw and put it right through there until you can screw it in place and lock it all there. 
There you go. So now we can go ahead and put on the front of the car. This is gonna go on very similarly to the back where it slides right in on the slot. Uh, make sure that your two uh, steering rods are on the side. They're, these are going to attach to the wheel in just a second. And just slide this on carefully. And before you slide it all the way on, we're going to take our main drive shaft here. And we're going to set this in place. One end goes in this cup. And the other end is going to go and connect to the front gear box. And that's what's going to give us all-wheel drive. So put that in place. Flip this around. Put this in place right here first, so it's sitting in that cup, and then slowly start sliding that on on the front wheels. Yeah. Until that gets in place. There we go. And now that rod's pinched right in the middle. So you can check that and see if that's turning all of the wheels. A little bit of slippage because it's not tight yet, but it is doing it. There we go. All right. All right, now that's connected, let's go ahead and take our receiver. We're going to get all wired up. We're going to set that basically right here opposite the motor. Uh, we're going to connect the wires with these banana clips to the motor. Black to black and red to red. So just take those and push them into place to connect them. This other wire is what connects to the battery, so just leave that disconnected. And then the servo for the steering has a little white cable, and that's going to plug in also in the controller board. That can only go one direction because of little pins helping it line up. But you're just going to take that, get it lined up in there, and then snap it in to connect it. Once that's connected, Let's go ahead and peel these little stickers for the adhesive back on the controller receiver and stick that in place. Just make sure you're not overlapping these two tabs here. All right, that's that. Now we can connect the top part of the frame and this is what's gonna give everything a lot more rigidity and hold everything in place. So to start off with, let's go ahead and connect the on-off switch that's coming off of the receiver. This is going to go up through this board. Just going to feed it up to the slot. Just make sure it's oriented the right way so that the on is labeled correctly. Push that over to set it over the holes and there should be two itty bitty screws that are gonna screw in here and hold that in place. So, as you can see, this kind of sits right around the, the motor. And these two slots here are for the steering rod, or the this, this steering towers, and then for the motor mount plate on the back. So that's what we're gonna connect next. 
Uh, first, let's remove these screws that we just, these nuts that we just put on here earlier. Set them aside, just hold these two rods in place, these uh, the steering posts in place while you have this off. Push them up through. There you go. And go ahead and just put them on lightly again. Don't quite tighten them yet. All right, then before we go through and tighten these in place, first we're gonna do the motor mount to the uh, the motor or connect to the motor mount plate in the back. There's two spacers to use for that. They are labeled B6. There's a little tab for you to hold on to with your fingers while you place them. And those are just gonna sit right here underneath and kind of be pinched in between B5 and the motor mount plate. And those holes line up. And again, these um, 14 millimeter screws are gonna go through there. through these holes, through these little spacers, and into the motor mount plate. So let's set these in. Started first, set the second one, make sure you get those holes lined up. And also screw those in place. We can tighten up these steering rod connections now. Use the screwdriver to hold the bottom. And turn these. These are also ones that you don't want to over tighten because that'll pinch the whole steering mechanism and make your steering really stiff and not really work. So just make sure that once that's connected, there's not too much play, but that these steering rods are pitched back and forth correctly when the servo moves. All right. Uh, next we have, we can just mount all of these screws in place to kind of hold everything rigid. Uh, they're 2.6 by 10 millimeter screws. And those will be two here going into the, the gear boxes. And then also mounting, there's four that you can use. You don't need to use all of them, but you could do two, um, two or you could do all four. And those go from the bottom of the frame into the gear boxes. And uh, then we're ready to attach the servos after that. So I'll put these in real quick.
So now that's all put together, the last thing we can do is just connect up our steering and then the car will be functional. So, I don't know if you can see this, but we have our steering rods down here. Those are going to connect to these little horns coming off the inside of the um, in, inner wheel off the steering cup. And you're going to go put the screw first through the steering rod and then down into this uh, the horn on the steering cup. So these are the remaining post screws from the uh, from the steering rod assembly. Now once you can connect that, um, you can notice that the uh, our wheels are not really pointed forward. Uh, they're kind of pointed at each other. So what we're gonna do is adjust these steering rods because they're a little bit tight. The way to do that is you get uh, a little pair of needle nose pliers to just turn these, uh, uh, these screws and that will kind of push these rods out. Do that on both these until your wheels are perfectly in line with one, one another. So once you have some pair of, a pair of pliers and you're ready to straighten out your wheels, just take and look at these uh, steering rods right in here. Let's turn the wheels so you can see those. Uh, they, the ones that the long steering rods that are connecting the wheels to the st um, steering mechanism, and they have a little bitty um, hex nut in the middle of them, and you can use your pliers to take and turn those. Uh, and so turning them up made them shorter and turning them down will make them longer. I made, my wheels were pointing towards each other and so uh, rotating them up for each side those wheels in from being uh, pointed at each other at the front to then being parallel. So now you can see, now the wheels are parallel and we're ready to take it for a test. So once you're all connected, get some batteries for your remote control. Take the lithium battery and just connect it here and turn the car on. And then when you turn the car on, it's immediately gonna try to put the uh, servo wherever the home position for the servo is. That might mean that your wheels are gonna be pointed off to the right or off to the left, depending on whatever the home position for your servo is. And so we'll use the trim on the remote control to correct for that. So first, I want you to take the bottom of these trim buttons, this is your throttle, and turn that all the way down. These are often, um, these might be up near the top and that's gonna be way too fast and you're gonna drive this right off your table. Turn it all the way down to the bottom and then take your steering and just turn that to adjust it to wherever is a nice center. I need to take some pressure off of the wheel so that the that can be adjusted. Dial it until that's about center. And when you're out there actually driving it, you can keep on playing with that until you get it just right so that your car drives in a straight line. If you get to one of the limits 
of your trim. Uh, you can always just uh, take and disconnect, or you can adjust the short ser um, servo rod the same way that you adjusted uh, the long servo um, steering rod. Or you can take off the servo horn entirely, uh, let it find its home, make sure this, this, the trim's at the middle, and then just reattach this servo rod. That should probably not be necessary uh, with your stock car. All right, now that you're connected, just make sure that you can drive forward and backwards. And so this is where you're gonna slowly move up the throttle trim until it moves slowly. There you go. And you can just try going backwards and forwards and make sure that that's all working correctly. All right, everything works. I'm gonna shut her back off. Disconnect the battery, and then we'll finish putting the car together. So when we get to the actual body, the first thing we're gonna do is the front. And so we have a front grill that's going to go going to go on right here. So there's two of these C1 spacers and then a front grill which is not labeled. The C1 spacers will go in right here. Yeah. And then the grill will just slide in right over those until I get those lined up. Once that's in place, we'll take one of these clips that we'll punch out, and those just go straight down through here and kind of snap into place. That'll hold this for now, and then there'll be a top piece that'll lock it in place better. Next, let's do our side pieces. So over on uh, the, the side of the car, the non-servo side, side of the car, we have our C, oh, this one's not labeled, our C4 piece, I believe. And that's gonna slide right here onto the frame. Like the other one, we have two clips that are going to push onto that and hold, lock it into place on the frame. C3, which is going to slide in here and carefully over this kind of fragile part right here. There we go. Just focus on the right hand side or the left hand side of the car first. Insert that there. And then, likewise, do the other side of the car. Once that's in place, this gets locked in with one of these pieces that are cut out, one of the cutouts. We'll just slot right in here. do our two uh, C4 pieces. And these will attach the same way. They both come through in this little slot, push through, and then they kind of push down downwards. Both of those will attach that same way. And once those are in there, these little tabs will fill in this gap and wedge them in place and keep them locked in place. To 
finish off the front. Uh, we take this long one here, push it through all the way through all of these ribs. Um, just as you're going through here, it's going to stick a lot. Just kind of wiggle it through and move each piece so you're not putting too much torque on it. bit by bit. So it's all the way through. And then we'll put on our hood ornament. together the entire front of the car. All right, then we can do the rear of the car, which first, let's put on this little shroud. Be very gentle with this as you're getting starting to bend it. All these little tiny cuts, this is called kerfing, and that's what'll allow this plywood to bend but you want to kind of ease it into it and get it to kind of naturally get to that form gently. If you try to bend it too fast and bend it all at once, it may break. And that would not be good. So just gently work it back and forth until it's ready to bend. All the way to about 90 degrees where it can go and sit in the car. So this will slide through up here, bend these in inside the wheels, push it through the rest of the way. And then these can fold over onto these tabs and get locked in place. like the other pieces. Repeat that on the other side. There we go. And last let's get the tail on. So the, the back goes on just like the front grill. You have two C1 pieces that fit into here. Let's put that rear on with the main crates logo. rolling away from me. this in place with a clip the bottom and then we'll put on our rear spoiler and then use two clips to put that in place all right 
And lastly, we can attach our battery. The battery comes with a little wrap to put through and hold that in place. So slide that underneath. Could have been really smart if I had put that on earlier. Better idea. Now let's go ahead and attach our battery and connect it. Tie it up with our tie in place. There we go. Let's go drive. <laughs>